Now that we've talked about Java's support for imperative programming with its classic object-oriented programming features, let's turn our attention to declarative programming. Java supports declarative programming via the functional programming features that were added in Java 8 and of course continue to this day. As before, we'll walk through a method implementation as a representative case study, this time demonstrating a functional programming approach. In addition, we'll also talk about the pros and cons of applying functional programming in Java. Functional programming is a so-called declarative paradigm. And what that means is that a program expresses computational logic without describing fine-grained control flow or often explicit algorithmic steps. Declarative programming therefore focuses much more on what computations should be performed instead of on how to compute them. In contrast, of course, imperative programming focuses a lot more on how the steps involved, for example, to mutate or change a program state. As before, let's take a look at an example to make this clear. We'll revisit the zap method we talked about earlier when we discussed imperative programming with object-oriented Java, except this time we'll talk about how to declaratively remove a given string from a list of strings. And as always, you can get the source code here at the link at the bottom of the slide. So as you can see, zap is a method that takes a list of strings and a string to omit, and then it does some interesting things in a declarative model using functional programming features that were added in Java 8. First thing it does is it takes the list of strings and converts it into something called a stream. We'll talk a lot more about a stream later, but a stream is basically a flow of elements or values or data or objects that can be transformed or filtered by subsequent operations. In this particular case, we're going to apply the filter operation to remove any line in the stream that matches the omit parameter. So you could read this by saying, we only allow things through the filter that don't equal omit. That's how we read that particular expression. Once we're done with that, we go ahead and use another operation, what's called a terminal operation or the collect operation, to collect all the lines that don't match the omit string, convert it into a list, and then return that list back to the caller. So you'll note that zap returns a list of strings just like the earlier object-oriented version did, except this time it's doing it with functional programming technique. Note also how Java Streams applies the fluent programming style or fluent programming pattern by chaining these method calls together, these things that are called operations. And we'll talk a lot about chaining and fluent interface style later in the course. So let's talk about the pros and cons of using a declarative programming model in Java. We'll start with the pros. Declarative programming focuses on the what, not the how, thereby making the code more concise and understandable once, of course, you understand the programming model. In particular, most of the moving parts are eliminated. There's really no control constructs that are visible. There's no loop here. There's no if statement. There's no switch. And you can read the code kind of from top to bottom. We convert the lines into a stream. We filter out anything that equals the omit string, and we collect the results into a list. So it's easy to read once you know how to read the syntax and understand the semantics. Something else that will become important later is it's really easy to parallelize the code. All we need to do is replace stream with parallel stream. And voila, we now have a parallel computation. So this parallelization only requires minuscule changes because the code we were writing here is declarative and stateless. We will talk later about whether it's a good idea to apply a parallel stream for this particular example. And the shorter answer is it really doesn't make sense unless you have a lot of lines that you're going to be checking to see if you want to omit them. But we'll talk about that later in the course. Of course, there are some downsides to the declarative programming model, the most obvious of which is that the concepts and patterns of declarative programming may not be well understood. So if you read about functional programming, you'll learn about monoids and functors and curring and lambda expressions and purity, pure functions and so on, side effects, monads and so on. And these things can sound rather baffling at first glance. Naturally, the goal that we're going to be doing throughout the rest of this material is to focus on demystifying the concepts and patterns of functional programming in a declarative model using modern Java features.
So that's the end of our discussion of declarative programming.